Hi everybody, this is Charlie Chewy Baca, host for Red Road Journeys, where we talk about the culture of recovery and other things related to recovery, and sometimes just other shit. I don't know. Um. Anyway, wanted to make a quick video about the top five things every newbie in recovery should know, and not in any specific order. And there's way more than five, but it just can give you five. A little chunk of time, that's all. Number five. Know how to feel like shit. I bring up this one often enough and for good reason too. As people in recovery, we do not have a lot of practice at not getting, well, maybe we do have a lot of practice at not getting our own way. We don't have a lot of practice at reacting to that in a good way. Sorry, right? so that's what I'm saying. Going through a breakup, usually we would drink, use, get high, whatever. Uh, uh, financial debt, that kind of stress drink use that's our reaction to life in fact i know when i was drinking i had a tool if i had a toolbox with how to cope with life especially my emotions i only had one tool in there all right maybe two it was a, a bong and um and a bottle of booze that was how i reacted to everything so when we get sober we uh, we need to process frustration without drinking, all right? We need to be bored without without drinking or using, without picking up. I need to know how to be criticized by somebody and, and, and not react negatively and, and go out and drink. I need to know how to feel a resentment and process that without, you know, saying screw it man i'm gonna go get drunk i'm gonna go get high it's like working out i always say this and i will again because repetition is the key it's like working out if i was to run five miles as fast as i can it, well oh god especially the first <laughs> half mile i ain't gonna feel every single thing wrong with my body and it's gonna hurt right i'm gonna spend a lot of time recovering from that because i just try <laughs> So it's the same thing emotionally. Emotionally, no pain, no gain. And we're gonna have to feel like shit. There's no way around it. But you don't have to do it alone. That's the good thing. Number four, identify negative self-talk. We all have self-talk. The average human being has anywhere from 300 to 1,000 words of self-talk in an hour. So we give ourselves permission to succeed or fail. A lot of my negative self-talk stems from childhood living with alcoholic parents but i think one of the number one things was uh i'm not good enough and working with thousands of people over the last 20 years and i can safely say thousands of people it could be a situation where a, a child a toddler was processing why well, he's not seeing a parent going you know what dad said he was going to come and see me every week and i haven't seen him for three four months I guess I'm not good enough. Or a little girl could be, you know, gosh, you know, mom said she was just going to, it was just going to be me and her. But, you know, here she is fighting with some other boyfriend, drunk or high. I guess I'm not good enough. For a child, that's how we process stuff. Then we grow up, whoop, and now we're telling ourselves that all the time. You know, man, I really wish I could go to college and have a different life. But, uh, man, I'm not good enough. Those kind of things really hold us back. You know, we could see somebody who's celebrating five years of sobriety in a meeting, and I got three months. In my mind, I'm going, God, five years? Five years of this? I can't do that. I'm like, I'm not good enough. So we got to get away from that. 12 step programs are great for that because they have all those sayings that change your self talk. First things first, this too shall pass. Um, it might pass like a kidney stone, but it'll pass. But that's how I get practice of feeling like shit. I think one of the best forms of self-talk for me was actually, you got to start somewhere, Charlie. That, I didn't have that until after I quit drinking. Whether it was, you know, going to a meeting, changing my diet, after almost losing my right leg, starting to, you know, slowly run and trot again, studying for my GED. I didn't even have a GED. So it, I remember that was the one thing hanging out with people in recovery gave me was that phrase, you got to start somewhere. And I still use that to this day. <clears throat> Number five. Oh no, sorry. Number three. My glasses. Hey, my old man glasses. Okay. Number three. 
boredom, coping with boredom. Boredom is really important. A lot of people will get sober, will get clean, and are bored. And it's 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 a difficult thing because the way the brain translates boredom for people in recovery is we think this is bullshit, man. This, all this recovery stuff, this isn't for me. I'm bored. I got sober for this. I got clean for this. Boredom is proof you're not doing something right. And this topic of boredom will lead to the last two remaining ones. But it's real important if you're bored to do something different, explore something. Number two would be give your sobriety or your recovery what you gave to your addiction. Meaning, when I was drinking and using when I was out there, man, I would do anything to get my fix. If it meant walking through a blizzard in Flagstaff <laughs> with a broken leg on crutches, right, to get to that party or get to that, you know, get to my supplier, no kidding, that's what I would do. Think about some of the stuff we've done, everything we've done just to get our fix. People prostitute themselves, we'll like hang out with dangerous people. Oh gosh, we've done a lot just to get our fix, man. So that effort we put into getting our drug of choice is the same effort we should put every day into our recovery. I mean, I would do that every day. I didn't care about pride. If my people I went to school with, and I was a dropout by then, I didn't care about that. If I was sitting there on the side of the road picking up Ludeman cans and putting them in a bag so I could go get some more booze for the evening, I didn't care what they thought about me. I really didn't. If I was out there begging for change, it didn't get that bad, but it does for a lot of us. If I was out there begging for change so I could get drunk, I didn't care. And I did, I would do stuff like that every single day. So the same efforts I put into my using, I should try that once a day for my recovery. You do that, you know what? Things might not be so boring and uh, you'll earn it because sobriety is indeed a gift. Recovery is indeed a gift, but it's not free. We have to earn it every day. And it's not, it doesn't have to be big bombastic kind of things. It can be just little tiny things that make a difference. And finally, number one, 90 meetings in 90 days. If you're a newbie and you're in 12-step programs, I understand 12-step programs isn't for everybody, but really after doing substance abuse counseling for 20 years, that's what works best for most people from what I've seen. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely from a place of, uh, where I'm not being very objective because I I go to 12-step meetings myself, but that's what I've seen even professionally. That's what works best for most people. So why 90 meetings in 90 days? It's like, that's like playing guitar. If I want to claim to be a musician, I have to do something every day for, for being a musician. I practice one hour. First thing I get up, you can see, I set my timer for 15 minutes and I practice for one hour and then I try to hit four hours every day. All right, I don't always do, but it's my little goal. But I have to do something if I want to consider myself a, a practicing musician, a, a recording musician, um, performing musician. I have to earn that title every day, even if it is just a year of me being a practicing musician. Same thing with recovery. So 90 meetings in 90 days is also a good analogy, again, for being a musician. If I only practice four hours once a week on a Saturday, you know what, I'm not really gonna develop the skills I want as a musician to play what I hear in my head, to be the musician I want to be. I have to do it every day. That's the same thing with recovery for a lot of people. I can't go to four meetings on Saturday, four 12-step meetings on Saturday, and then think that's gonna get me, that's gonna be for the whole week. It, it doesn't really work like that. I need that contact every day, even when things are going really good. Because for a lot of us, when things are going really good, that's a big trigger for a lot of us. I know it was for me. Any reason was a trigger for me to use. But if things were going good, that was definitely a trigger for me to use. All right, let's celebrate. 90 meetings in 90 days because we need that practice of being someplace in different, a whole new, that whole new cultural exposure of, of being in, in recovery culture. We need that. We need that because change feels fake. You know, it, it just, that's just a normal part of change is it's gonna feel fake. So I need to go to meetings all the times until I get used to it and accept it as a way of life. And a way of life is a, a real brief definition for culture. Okay, I hope these videos help. Please subscribe to this channel and have a few videos like this, make more videos related to recovery, guitar stuff. And I might even have a new playlist on a, a, a training I used to do, mostly for non-Native American clinicians 
called everything you wanted to know about Indians, or but but were afraid to ask. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. <laughs>